Mr Chairman. Uh, this is a rare occasion for me. I've got more than a minute and for once I'm not going to disagree with anyone. Um, I would like to emphasize one or two things that have already been said and look at them from a slightly different view. There are a number of practical issues which Diana Wallace has touched on, as indeed did Sir Robert. The reality is that we have had many potential witnesses on our list. We have heard a few, and there are a great, deal, or a great many more that we need to hear if we can. And that includes many of the most important ones in my view. We have another practical problem, is, is, and that is that we have had too many of these witnesses that have come forward at the same meeting, so there has been very little time to interrogate them. There has been no real cross-examination. They are not under oath. We haven't been able to subpoena them. And of course there is a practical problem that flows from the inevitable requirement of translation. Now taken together, these are, I believe, fairly serious weaknesses, although the committee collectively is doing its very best to overcome them. But just to give you an illustration of what I'm talking about, the British government turned up en masse. A spokesman for the Treasury, the F uh, Financial Services Authority and the government actuary all arrived together, clearly having re rehearsed their band parts uh, to the nth degree. They hunted as a pack, they stood together, we were unable to prise them apart or to check uh, facts because they had come to admit nothing and to concede nothing. Even their answers to specific questions were evasive. And to give you one vivid illustration, they denied that the government or the uh, equivalent department had any knowledge of problems with equitable life ten years before we knew and we have proof that they did. And I just want to catch up with the point about shared management which has been raised by others as a final thought. It seems to me that shared management in this case is turning out to be no management at all. The Irish thought that the British government was checking on equitable life and if they were, they were saying nothing. So the Irish were kept in ignorance. And if, for example, today a Latvian financial services company started conducting business all over the European Union, each member state, it seems, would assume that the Latvian government was itself satisfied. But that wouldn't necessarily be the case, and that's not a reflection on Latvia, let me add him. This is just an example. Whereas, if that company was outside the European Union, every member state would check thoroughly, and that's a problem.